Hey guys, welcome back to Civil Learning Online. And today in this video, I'm going to discuss about the Gauss Seidel method. First of all, we will learn what you will, uh, what is the working rule for the Gauss Seidel method. And later, I will solve a numerical example which will be based upon the Gauss Seidel method. So, without any further delay, let's. So guys, let's begin the solution of this problem which is based upon gauss seidel iteration method and we are asked to solve the following equation by gauss seidel iteration method and the given equations are 2x plus 6y minus z equals to 85, x plus y plus 54z equals to 110, 6x plus 15y plus 2z equals to 72. So here, uh, while solving any numerical based upon the gauss seidel iteration method, there are few working rules which we need to follow. Uh, to solve any kind of problem first thing which we need to do is we have to check uh, in each and every equation the coefficient or the magnitude of the variable must be higher so here if we look in the first row what we have uh, coefficient of 27 is high highest among all these only in the second equation we have the coefficient of z highest uh, in comparison to these two and uh, here in third equation we have the coefficient of y higher so what you need to do is we ne will need some arrangement here means we have to arrange this equation before solving this it is because their equations must satisfy uh, diagonal dominance property and what is diagonal dominance property let me show you so here we can see that uh, suppose we are provided with the equa uh, equations in the form a11x plus a12y plus a13z equals to b1 similarly a21x uh, this is just representing the coefficient or the magnitude of the variables what happens here uh, in first row a11 must be greater than the sum of other two coefficients so here we can see that in first row in first row we have 27 27 is greater than uh, 6 plus 1 we do not we will not consider minus sign because we will just focus on the magnitude and or the coefficients which it carries so we will ignore the signs and just do the addition of the coefficient so 27 is greater than 6 and 6 plus 1 7 okay so first is satisfied first dominance property is satisfied for second property that is a22 means the here what we need to do is we have to do some arrangement if we, we need to rewrite these equations like this see here uh, i'm going to write here if uh, it is already written in this form suppose uh, in the first equation the coefficient of x first x variable must be uh, higher uh, highest among other two variables similarly in the second equation coefficient of y must be higher among other two variables similarly uh, in third equation the coefficient of z must be higher as compared to other uh, two variables so what we need to do here we need some arrangement so rewriting rewriting the equations so so we when rewriting the equation we will have 27x plus 6y minus z equals to 85 similarly we need to rewrite this uh, equation in the second position and this on third see here what we will have here 6x plus 15 y plus 2z equals to 72 similarly we will have x plus y plus 54z equals to 100 10. now uh, we have just do we have to check the diagonal dominance property in our mind see here we have a11 a22 a33 these three elements in each and every row are higher than uh then ad the sum of the coefficient of two other variables see here 15 is greater than 6 plus 2 8 similarly 54 is greater than 1 plus 1 2 here 27 is greater than 6 plus 1 7 okay i hope you understood this now what we need to do is we have to rewrite this equation again for the for x y and z so again we will write here solution solution writing writing the given equations for x y and 
z so on writing the given equations for x y and z how we can write this C here uh, what we need to do is we have to bring these two on other sides of equal equals to so here it is 6 y positive so it will get minus and here it is minus so it will get positive so we will have here uh, x equals to x equals to uh, 85 minus 6 y plus z and this whole divide by 27 this is for x i hope you understood this similarly here we have to write for uh, y so for y we will have here y equals to bring these two uh, terms this side so we will have 72 minus 2z minus 6x so i am going to write here 72 minus 6x minus 2z and this divided by 15 this it is was for y similarly we will again write for z so z equals to 1 by 54 times 1 by 54 times 110 minus x minus y minus x minus y okay these three equation we got for x y and z now we will proceed with the iterations so how we are going to do iteration so i am going to write here iteration 1 iteration 1 for iteration 1 what we will do here we will take we will solve for x1 iteration 1 we will solve for x1 and here if i tell uh, uh, explain you the uh, working rule what happens here when we are calculating x1 this is the same form which uh, we which we got after solving for x y and z here i have written as it is only the difference is what we will take the value for y uh, z okay because we will be provided with the here a a a12 a13 a b1 are the constants but variables are y not z not so wh what we will take see here whenever we are solving any problem based upon the uh, gauss seidel iteration method and we are when we are finding x1 we will take y naught and z naught equals to 0 always remember we will take y naught and z naught equals to 0 if initial iteration elements are not given in the problem we will proceed with taking zero value okay so here we will take zero zero and once we get the value of x1 because we will we will have value of a11 b1 a12 a13 okay but we will not have the value of this variable so we will proceed with zero and once we get the value of x1 what we will do we will pro we will supply this x1 value to y1 because in in uh, while solving for y we will see x in that equation also so here we will provide the value we got what we got means recent value is provided to the uh, succeeding equation succeeding e step also we can say that so uh, this is what we are going to do here so we will take for iteration one we will take uh, y naught equals to zero and z naught equals to zero and we have x equals to one by twenty seven one by twenty seven times eighty five minus six times zero plus z means zero on solving this we will get the value of x one as three point one four eight one okay similarly we will do for y one for y one we will, we have equation one by 15 times 72 minus 6 and this time we will not take x naught we will take the value which we recently got that is 3.1481 this is the difference in between the gauss seidel iteration method and jacobi's iteration method or gauss jacobi's iteration method in gauss jacobi's iteration method what we had done here we would have taken x naught equals to 0 y naught equals to 0 z naught equals to 0 but here we will take the recent value for x1 y1 and z1 so here six times 3.1481 uh, you can take up to three or four decimal places in this problem i am taking up to three to four decimal places so here we have taken uh, four decimal places means after decimal we will i am taking four digits so here two times z naught is 0 on solving this we will get the value of y1 equals to 3.5407 
I am not doing the calculation. I have already calculated the value. But you can uh, once you calculate this value using calculator, you will get the same values. Uh, in some position, you I may have round off, but that won't create any kind of problem because at the end you will get the value similar answer. Okay, so Z1 equals to one by fifty four. 1 by 54 times 110 minus x is 3.1481 minus y is 3.5407 on solving this we will get the value of z1 equals to 1.9131 this was our first iteration now for second iteration what we will do we will uh, use these values for in second iteration so see here iteration 2 and we have to uh, keep doing the iteration until we have a similar value uh, in two respective iteration we must give the same value of x y and z if we get start getting that value then we will stop doing iteration so for iteration 2 we have x2 equals to 1 by 27 times 85 minus 6 times y value is 3. Point in place of y we will use this value so 3.5407 uh, plus z is 1.9131 okay so on solving this we will get x2 equals to uh, 2.4322 similarly for y2 y2 we will have 1 upon 15 times 70 2 minus 6 times x1 or uh, means that we will this time we will use the value recent value of x that is 2.4322 minus 2 times and z value z value we will use this value so 1.9132 okay on solving this we will get the value of y2 equals to 3.5720 again for z2 for z2 what we will do z2 equals to uh, 1 upon 54 times 110 minus x is 2.4322 minus y is 3.5720 so here we will have 1.9258 it was for z2 similarly we will do the third iteration and you can see the difference here we have 3.1 for here it is 2.43 let's check if we get the similar value for iteration 3 in iteration 3 or not now time for iteration 3 so i am going to write here x3 equals to 1 upon 27 times 85 minus 6 times y and the recent value of y was 3.5720 plus z is 1.9258 on solving this we will get the value of x3 as 2.4257 okay and similarly we have y3 equals to 1 by 15 times 72 minus 6 times x 2.4322 5 7 okay we will use this value in, instead uh, in place of x and minus 2 times z z is 1.9258 on solving this we will get the value of y3 as 3.5729 again for y4 sorry z3 again for z3 we will have uh, 1 upon 54 times 110 minus x and x value is 2.4257 and minus y y is 3.5729 on solving this we will get the value of z3 as 1.9259 okay similarly we will do the iteration 4 iteration 4 and check whether the values are getting uh, equal or not similar values or not uh, so here the value of x3 is varying from uh, iteration 2 
so we will do one more iteration and check if we are getting the similar same value or not in two respective iteration we have got a little bit similar value of y3 and y2 in the iteration third and second uh, and the value of z3 and z2 is a bit different uh, uh, due to four, four decimal places so we will do the fourth iteration quickly and for fourth iteration we have so here uh, in iteration 4 we have get a, we have got value very much close to what we have got in iteration 3 see here 2.5730 it is 29 on round off we will get 30 1 1.9259 1.9259 2.4257 2.4255 it is similar it can be considered equal value means the answer could be uh, we can stop here if not if you still have doubt then you can do one more step uh, one more iteration to get to be more very much confirm if you want in if only if you have exact time extra sufficient time in exam if not you can stop up to iteration 4 and the benefit of using the gauss seidel iteration method and comparison to gauss jacobi's iteration method is that in gauss jacobi's iteration method as we are taking uh, initial value uh, we are taking the uh, in starting we are beginning with taking x not equals to 0 y not equals to 0 z not equals to 0 uh, it uh, we have to do very much mean lots of iterations you know but in uh, gauss seidel iteration method as we are taking the recent value uh, the number of iteration decreases so here we have got the answer in fourth iteration only if you ask me do, to do the fifth iteration then see see how we can do the fifth iteration iteration 5 so our iteration 5 for x5 will be 1 by 27 times 1 by 27 times 85 minus 6 times 3.5730 plus 1.9259 we will not get any kind of differences here so 2.4255 similarly we have y5 equals to this is just to uh, show you that we are not getting any kind of differences further so this is going to be our answer for x y and z 72 minus 6 times 2.4255 minus 2 times 1.9259 so here we will get 3.5730 similarly z5 will be 1 by 54 times 110 minus 2.4255 minus 3.5730 on solving this we will get 1.9259 this is our answer i hope you enjoyed this today's lecture i hope and i hope this is visible to you now and if you are you guys are enjoying the content on civil learning online channel then do like this video leave a comment if you are enjoying the content do share this video with your friend see you in the next video till then stay safe and take care of yourself